Well, that was a uh, <coughs> son of a bitch getting that out of there. I think the most difficult task was getting the right fan out of there. It allows you such a small space, even with the motor mounts or the uh, the mounts off of the condenser here. You only get just a little bit of give. Of course, you can pull back the grill here. <coughs> Ideal situation would be taking off this whole grill, maybe even the bumper if you had extra time, but it's so flexible. So, there's your condenser. Lines going to the condenser. Be very careful when you're taking your um, fan and radiator out there not to or damage any of these fins. Um, there is a housing for the bottom of the radiator. So, training fluid down there. Be sure to uh, clean up any debris, clean the, um, the mount housings. You can see one there. And uh, clean any fluid that's like spilled because we're going to seat our uh, new radiator in that spot and we don't want like to contaminate it. So, got us a nice empty spot in the front of our engine here. And uh, we'll be coming back to uh, to show you the installation process. Usually, <coughs> I'll just go ahead and do this in reversal, but uh, we're going to do a, uh, a quick uh, overview on installation. I'm sure a few things will um, be different here and there as opposed to disassembly. Um, so if I find any shortcuts, I'm going to share it with you. Um, <coughs> before we uh, conclude this segment, I'm going to show you what kind of condition our old radiator is in. It's pretty bad. You can see, you can see the, uh, the teal spillage, you know, right there where it was leaking all the way down. And you see right here, the crusty teal green color. That's where it was leaking. It looks like either on the bottom or where it leaked down. So then, but right here is the money shot. You can see exactly where it was leaking all along that seam. Sucker so was a bad shape. It's time to change this baby out. Now, check your mounts at the bottom, your rubber mounts, they go into the car on the mounts I showed you on the other side. And if they're cracking, you might want to change those out. Now these seem okay. I might change them out anyway, since, since I'm hoping this will be the last time I have to do this particular job on this car. I went to various store shops. I've got a few supplies here. I've got a um, uh, upper hose, brand new one. Got a lower hose, brand new. Um, chances are you're not going to have, you're not going to find all of these products all in one place. I had to go to O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Napa. I got a uh, new radiator cap, which is strongly recommended every time you change your coolant. Um, it's got a little pressure sensitive piece up here, little rubber gaskets. All these can get worn down. So I've got this at Napa. I've got my hoses at O'Reilly's. They've got plenty of these. Also, I've got three feet of transmission cooler hose. Now, <clears throat> I wasn't sure of the size to get. They have various sizes. So I just cut a piece of my old hose off, took it up there, and uh, did a little eyeballing, and I got the right size that would fit the uh, the brass fittings. And of course, new grommets. These suckers, I can only get them from the dealership. They're not available anywhere else, except specialty shops. These were $3.75 a piece. I needed 12 of them. So um, dealership gets you, definitely. Overall price of this uh, radiator uh, replacement and labor and all, um, I called 
the dealership and they told me it would be around seven hundred and fifty dollars and all the supplies that I've gotten so far and of course my labor um, free it's uh, about two hundred dollars so um, I saved quite a bit okay we're going to reverse our steps that we took earlier to removing the radiator um, and reinstalling it. So first thing we need to do is <coughs> put the right fan shroud and fan back in the slot there. As, uh, I did have a little trouble getting that one out. And the only way I was able to get the radiator out of there is by moving the fan back, um, moving the condenser back along with the radiator and taking the radiator out first and then once the radiator was out I was able to take the fan out. I couldn't take the fan out first so put the fan back in first, um, push it up toward the engine and then slide your radiator in there and try not to damage any fins. I went ahead and put the rubber seats for the radiator back in their spots. Um, groove spots, you'll know exactly where to put them. Uh, once I drop the radiator in there, um, I'll pick it up and I'll make sure it's reseated correctly. And we'll take it from there. Here's the new radiator. It's a uh, exact OEM fit. Um, got it online on eBay from a reputable store for around 75 bucks. Retail, it's around 375 Everything's exact fit. Came with all the fit brass fittings, um, all the additional screw hole or screws or nuts, and uh, like I said, it's exact fit. New radiator, old radiator, corrosion. New radiator. Shiny. No corrosion. No bent fins. So, <coughs> we're going to slip this one in right into the compartment right here. Now you see I got my right fan in. Let's make sure that you got a spot at the bottom for the radiator to fit in. You might have to maneuver the fan around a little bit while you slip it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that radiator in there and seat it in its uh, rubber mountings at the bottom. <laughs> 